Hey everyone, welcome into the Investing in Real Estate Show. Clayton Morris here. I'm with my man, Jerry Norton, who is in town. We're driving for dollars today. He is the flipping master. So he buys houses, fixes them up, and flips them. I buy houses and I hold them. But driving for dollars, I think, is how we both got yeah. our start, right? So when you're driving for dollars, what the heck does that even mean? Well, it's the uh, it's it's a great way to really a couple of things happen when you drive for dollars. You, you learn your market really well. I mean, it's amazing how when you're going up and down the streets, you start to learn the neighborhoods, what's nice, what's not so nice, where the transition points are. I mean, it's such valuable information to do. I recommend everybody at least spend time doing that just to learn their market. But it's when you start to identify distressed properties, right? I mean, you look around right. and you see something that's been neglected. And whenever you see a neglected property, there might be a motivated seller that owns that property that would sell that house at a discount. Right, so when we talk about neglect on a house, um, what are we talking about here? Because I'm driving through, I'm seeing some houses that look, you know, here we got some- yeah, needs a roof. New, needs a new roof over here. Mm -hmm. This one is doing, having some work done, so you see some transitional stuff. Well, there's a couple things we look for. One is vacant. Uh, so. If the, if the property's neglected and on top of that is vacant, that's a really good sign. Like you couldn't ask for a better situation than that. One good thing to find out if a house is vacant is, do you see a lot of newspapers in the driveway? Now over here, we got newspapers sitting here in the driveway, but this house isn't vacant. Now when you start to see five, six piles of newspapers mm -hmm. sitting there, uh, likely could be a vacant house. You see the grass much higher, right? Boarded up. Boarded up. Boards up, board ups are a good sign of that. Tall grass, piled up mail. Those right. are kind of all signs that no one's kind of there taking care of the house. And so that could be an absentee owner, somebody who's moved away. Um, it could be a an investor who, you know, just for whatever reason isn't keeping up on it, isn't renting it out. And those are those are those telltale signs of a motivated seller behind that property. So I want to show you a house. We're going to pull up here on a house in a second, and just to give you an idea of a house that was neglected, abandoned, and is now being renovated and is about to be flipped. And if you notice over here, we'll show you this more, but this is a new construction house across the street that just mm -hmm. sold. That was a teardown? That was a teardown of a house. And over here, this is the house that was neglected. Yeah. Now you can see this bad boy, wide open windows, total disrepair and this thing is about to be knocked down and a new house is going to go up in its place so let's get out and check it out this one obviously needs a lot of work so jerry when you see a house like this what does this say to you as a flipper <laughs> as a flipper uh, this is beautiful right this means that there is somebody that owns this property there's a good chance that they would love to get rid of this property it's causing them some kind of hardship i mean even if you're not taking care of it you still have property taxes you know, you have the city probably calling, you have neighbors, you have all these issues. It's a headache for somebody that doesn't care about it or moved away or just wants to get rid of it. And you, you obviously can't, can't sell this house retail. Right. Someone's not gonna get a mortgage on it. So you need an investor. This house needs an investor. So let's take a look a little closer here. So on the surface, if you're driving around your neighborhood driving for dollars, it might not necessarily have popped out to you right? This is where getting to know your neighborhood can be really important. Um, you know, the windows were probably all closed at one point. Now there's a rehabber who's getting his hands into it. He's starting to play with it a little bit. So he's, he's probably airing it out. It might stink inside. On the surface, this might look like a decent roof, right? doesn't mm -hmm. look like it needed a ton of work. But if you start to notice what's happening with the bricks, the garage door, what would have been some other signs for you as a, as a flipper seeing this house? Well, one of the things that I really look for as a flipper is I look for other contractors in the area working. So when you're driving and you're seeing a contractor, like if we came over here at a different time, there might be people here starting to do stuff. That's great or too. Down the road, right down here, if we just pan down here, there's a house being worked on right now. Brand new construction going up. This one, this one right here, a tear down now brand new construction. So to you, yeah. this is an opportunity, right? Well, what you look for is exactly what you said. I mean, you have a million dollar home here across the street, you have this. So these up and coming areas right now, what you're seeing a lot of is investors are tearing these down and they're building new. So these investors that do that, they're always looking for deals. If you were to get a contract on this house with this seller, you could go to the person who did that house and say, hey, you just did a new construction across the street. 
Did that go well for you? I got a, I got another one. Are you interested? Right. And that's where you really can find both your buyers and your and your sellers. Because my man Jerry here is a rehabber. He's a flipper. So he wants people to be bringing him deals. So he has a program, and the link is below this video, that if you find a deal anywhere in the country, just click on that link and send it to Jerry. And in that link, you're going to pay them $10,000 for that house. That's right. Because yeah. you need deals. Just like this guy is looking for deals. He he could he would take this house in a heartbeat, right? <laughs> you know what's funny is, uh, I, I joke about this all the time, but flippers and even buy and hold investors, when it comes to finding deals, are lazy. They don't want to spend all of the effort to go out and find a deal. They just want to do their thing, right? They want to fix up a house or build a house. Or like in your case, man, I want that property so I can get my tenant in there and do my thing. You bring so much value to the table if you're willing to go out there in your markets and look for these deals, get a simple contract with the seller, bring it to an investor like me, I'll pay you $10,000 for it. Right, you're absolutely right because it is another job. So these guys that are doing this kind of a house over here, they're spending like a year building this house. And, and they're good at it, that's what they're good at. They're very good at it, but they'd also, they'd have to get an entire other person in their office who's out there finding deals maybe even more than one person in their office to go out and find deals. And that's where the real value is. If you can bring someone like this a deal, you can make 10, 15, 20. In this neighborhood, I've made upwards of $40,000 just assigning a contract to a flipper who's gonna then work on this property. That's it, that's all about that. I mean, flippers in every market are always looking for deals. I'm especially that way. What's great about me is I've built a, a system where I can do this in any market in the US. And so that's why it doesn't matter where you live, you can live outside the US, find a deal in the US, bring it to me, I'll pay you $10,000 for it. So, I mean, that's a great way to get started flipping. It's right. a great way, I mean, even if you wanna do it part-time, you can do that full-time. You can then, from there, you can transition into doing your own deals or, or funding your next buy and hold, whatever it is, uh, but it's a great way to get that $10,000 check in your hands. Awesome stuff. So join us in the next video because we're going to talk about some of the pros and cons of flipping versus buy and hold, which is my strategy. I love the buy and hold and he loves the flipping. So we're going to mm -hmm. talk about that in our next video. But meanwhile, click on the link below if you've got a deal. You can sign up for Jerry's program. He'll pay you $10,000 for a deal. Join us in our next video. We'll see you next time.